Well, hello there. It's so good to see you again. I feel like so much has happened since the last time we spoke. I mean, it's been a crazy couple of weeks with work. I had a bunch of workshops that I had to get through. There's everything that's been kicking off with the Rugby World Cup, which is very exciting or not, depending on where you live and who you support. And um, oh, the really exciting news. I cast on a sock. Oh, and I went to Rhinebeck. Well, hello there, Pickles. I really do hope you're well. My name is Caroline. I'm found more commonly across Instagram and Ravelry as Dunderknit. I'm a knitter living here in London in the UK. And if this is your first time joining us here in the podcast, a huge hello and welcome to you. I really do hope that you're well. I do start each episode just with a friendly warning and disclaimer that this is a swearing friendly podcast and therefore if the swears are not for you this may well also not be the podcast for you. I thank you so much for checking us out but um, yeah just, just for both of our benefits probably not one for you. Um, to everybody who stumbled across me at Rhinebeck and particularly to those of you who either directly or your partners um, pointed out that I was quote unquote the swearing lady. <laughs> oh my Christ, I love you so much. If that is something that I'm going to be known for, I'm entirely okay with it. <laughs> As a quality, I feel it is one of my better traits between you and me. <laughs> to those of you who are returning back, whether you were at Rhinebeck or not, a huge hello and welcome to you. I really do hope that you are on the absolute best of terms with today. Yes, dear people, there is really no getting away from it. This is going to be a rather Rhinebeck heavy episode. As you can see, I have returned from Rhinebeck. I am back in my usual spot. This is going to be a bit of a summary of all things that occurred while I was over there. I do want to mention right up front that just in case anyone's wondering, I do not have a Rhinebeck vlog to share. I'm really sorry about that. As I mentioned to you in the previous episode, I wasn't entirely sure that I was going to do one. As it turned out, it was just too much to be able to try and do that and meet with people and speak to friends and kind of just try and embrace and, and not become hugely overstimulated, which never works. <laughs> Um, by the entirety of the festival itself. I did manage to document a fair bit of it over on Instagram. If you do want to take a look over there, you can have a look in my personal Instagram highlights, so I am Dundernit on Instagram. Um, you can also, even if you're not an Instagram user yourself, you can go to a website, which I will link in the show notes below, and you can see the highlights pop up underneath my profile as little circles on there. There is one specifically for Rhinebeck, and you'll be able to see what I got up to in a little bit more detail there. This episode is going to be more of a verbal summary uh, with a little bit of show and tell as we go because it may not surprise you to know I made a couple of purchases when I was over there. I mean we're all shocked. We're all of us shocked. Ish. But before I get into the Rhinebeck recap proper, I do want to make a quick announcement up front. This is not related to Rhinebeck. We will be talking about the Gold Along, about the Vicarious Rhinebeck um, giveaway in a few minutes. However, right up front, I just wanted to announce that the Blame Dunderknit Along is making a hopefully welcome return. Yes, you heard it here first. So for those of you who are a little bit newer to the podcast, the Blame Dunderknit Along is is a knit along, crochet along, sew along, general make along of all sorts that we kicked off for the first time last year. Um, largely it is because in the run up to the festive season you tend to hear a lot of people talk about kind of obligation knitting or gift knits or slogging through things that are perhaps a little bit worthy and a little bit less rewarding in terms of the knit and so what I wanted was to give each and every last one of you an excuse to cast on and work on whatever takes your fancy. If you have been desperate and dying to cast on one particular pattern, work with one particular yarn, if you just need to be enabled in some way, I am so here for you 
on that. I want you to use my name in vain. I want you to use me as an excuse. I want any partners around you to be sick to the damn sight of, <laughs> of anything to do with the blame dundered it along. I just think this is such a season where we tend to focus so much on giving and on, um, you know, kind of putting obligations on ourselves that sometimes it's good to take a little bit of self-care, have a little bit of a kind of personal reward and just something of your absolute own that you can use as a bit of a means of just, you know, treating yourself kindly. And so with that in mind, the Blame Dundon It Along will be running from the 1st of November. That is this coming Friday. Partly why I needed to mention it right up front. Um, so yes, the Blame Dundon It Along will run from the 1st, which is this coming Friday, until the 31st of January. So you will have three whole months to knit with wild abandon. You can make one project, you can make multiple projects. The only um, precursor in any of this is that you must cast something on. It can't be a whip, it can't be something that's already in place. It needs to be something that you are working on and casting on for the first time. And so, yes, I am tremendously excited. I will be opening a thread over in the Ravelry group for people to start planning what they want to work on um, ahead of the starting date on the 1st of November. I already have a couple of ideas that I'm going to talk to you about a little bit later on for what I'll be casting on personally, but I hope that you are very excited about this. Now, as with last year, we will have a couple of different places for you to engage, for you to chat. There will be the Blame Dundon It Along chatter thread over on Ravelry, which is an absolute free-for-all. You can go in, you can post whatever you like. Certainly last year, and one of the most wonderful things about running this little long last year was the extent to which people were getting involved in supporting and enabling and just sharing so many messages within this chatter thread. It is a wonderful place to go if you want some ideas, some inspiration, some encouragement. I would just highly, highly recommend that you take a look at that thread there once it is up and running. And similarly, we will also have a an FO thread on Ravelry as well. So as and when you get to a point of having finished something, you can go in there and post. We will also have a blamed under it along hashtag making a welcome return over on Instagram. I know it's been sort of peppered with usage throughout this year, but it will be making a bit of a comeback. And as we've been doing with the Glorious Gold Long, I will make sure that I'm showcasing some of your amazing projects and works in progress throughout the next couple of months. For each of those different ways you can engage, so within the chatter thread, the FO thread, and indeed using the Instagram hashtag, there will be a prize associated with it. Yes, I'm still in the process of starting to work those kits up, but as with last year, my intention is to handpick some um, goodies from makers that I have talked to you about over the course of this year, um, people who I have a huge amount of love and respect for in terms of both them and their products. And so with that in mind, I will be showcasing a little bit more about those prizes in the coming episodes. As with last year, it's a point to say that this isn't just about prizes. Prizes obviously are a wonderful part of it, but hopefully for you guys, one of the main things that you can take from it is an opportunity to really embrace something that you've been wanting to do for a long old time. And as I say, willfully use me as an excuse to engage with that. And so there you have it. The Blame Dungeon It Along will be kicking off Friday the 1st of November, running until the 31st of January, and more details can be found about it over in our Ravelry group. That is to say, the Ravelry group, which you can find by searching for Knitting Vicariously podcast group over on Ravelry. I will put a link to it in the show notes below. There will also be extended show notes over in that forum as well. Similarly, for all other show notes, you can follow me over on Instagram, where I have the Knitting Vicariously Instagram account. It's specific to the podcast itself. It's separate from my personal one. And with each episode, I will upload um, a post specific to the episode with a link to some of the makers that I've mentioned and any relevant hashtags there as well. 
Right, this is a slightly jumbled order this week because we've got a few things to get through, but the second thing that was on my list to talk to you about is the Vicarious Rhinebeck giveaway. So over in Ravelry, we have had our Vicariously Rhinebecking thread, and this is an opportunity for folks who weren't able to attend Rhinebeck in person, whether it be, um, you know, kind of logistics or circumstances, whether it be you're just not a big fan of yarn festivals, whether it be you have no intention of heading to Rhinebeck anytime soon, I wanted to make sure that you had an opportunity to experience a little bit of Rhinebeck joy for yourself and therefore I, when I was over in Rhinebeck, put together a little prize package for those of you who couldn't be there and um, that is going to form our Rhinebeck giveaway package. Now, the thread itself does not close immediately. You have until Friday the 8th of November to answer over there. It is one post per person and if you haven't answered already, I do recommend that you nip over there and check it out. The prompt itself is share what it was that you were up to that Rhinebeck weekend as a means of kind of connecting with and embracing all of the fun craftiness that was happening round about then. If you didn't do anything, that's totally fine. You can still answer the prompt and let me know what it was that you were up to or indeed you can take a slightly different steer on it and say well I was doing this but I'd much rather have been doing x y and z even if that wasn't coming to Rhinebeck itself. Just something that taps into the general fun and furore of yarny madness. As of Friday the 8th of November, I will close that thread and I will choose one post at random using Random Number Generator and that prize winner will be the lucky recipient of my little Rhinebeck haul that I've put together. And with no further ado, I will show that off to you now because it's pretty good. If I do say so myself, it's pretty stellar. So first up in our vicariously Rhinebecking giveaway prize package is a bag from a maker that I have raved about since almost day one of this podcast. One of my absolute highlights of the festival was getting to meet this incredible maker in person and it should come as absolutely no surprise to you to know that I am talking about Tani Casey who has designed so many of my project bags, has just created some incredible designs and this is definitely one of them. So you are going to be the lucky recipient of this Tani Casey tote bag. It is one of her latest designs. It has these stunning black leather handles and a black wax, wax canvas bottom. Waxed canvas, that's harder to say than you'd expect. There is a little snap on the inside here and as with all of her bags, she has this wonderful and sturdy canvas lining. There's a couple of pockets here in the back and all in all, it is a tremendously well-made bag because you'd expect nothing less of this lady. Now, absolute complete and full disclosure, um, try as I might, I was not able to give Tani Casey money for this bag. Um, I genuinely tried as hard as I possibly could. So this is, uh, I just want to be candid and, and highlight up front that this is something that Tani has generously donated as a prize to the podcast here. And so um, yes, you will be winning this amazing tote bag. Her booth at the Rhinebeck Yarn Bazaar was so incredibly crowded. It made me deliriously happy because I rave about her bags. She's a wonderful person as well. And um, yeah, I am genuinely delighted to be offering you, uh, or at least one lucky viewer here, an opportunity to be winning a fabulous tote bag of hers. So first up in the prize is this tote bag. The second thing that I picked up for you when I was out there was also at the Rhinebeck Yarn Bazaar. It was an absolutely amazing, albeit incredibly crowded event. Um, I got there towards the end of the afternoon. I'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But in the meantime, there was a pin badge there from a fabulous maker that caught my eye and I couldn't possibly walk away without it. And you'll see why momentarily. So this is a pin badge from Black Pearl Magic. And I think it just speaks volumes about us and what we do over here at this channel. Because I make nice shit by hand. I mean, how could I not? How could I not? This is the perfect pin for everyone uh, who is a fan of knitting vicariously and enjoys what we do over here. And therefore, I had to get this for you. It's a great little pin. It has these two little fixtures on the back here so that you can pin it to pretty much whatever you like, be it a project bag, a finished project, or indeed something else altogether. But I couldn't possibly resist this fantastic little pin. 
Sticking with pins for a second here, pun only partially intended. Oh, that makes me chuckle. Um, I also picked up a pin for you at the Nerd Bird Makery stand. This was a stand that was at Indie Untangled, and this is a pin that I have seen in countless places over Instagram in recent months, and I genuinely could not resist. So, you have a Nevertheless She Knitted pin, which is one of my favourite designs of hers and I just, I absolutely adore it. Again, there's a little fixer, a fixture here in the back with a little rubber stopper so that it will stay nice and uh, secure on whatever you decide to fix it to. But yes, love Nerdburn Makery, love the pins and couldn't resist picking one of these up for you as well. Also from Indie Untangled and indeed at the same stand as Nerd Bird Makery was a new to me yarn company and dyer and um, thank you so much to those of you who stopped by, who said hello to me on the day and pointed me in the direction of the dye project because good lord you are not wrong. I picked up a couple of skeins from her in the just most beautiful, luxurious, soft and snuggly base that you can possibly imagine. These two skeins here are on her Ecola worsted base. You have the colourway Verdant on this side and the colourway Driftwood over here. They are beautiful. I will hold them up to the camera for you to be able to see and appreciate them properly. Apologies for the slight shadow that you're getting from my camera there. There's not much I can do about that right now. Um, but you can see just the depth of these colours, the green in particular, is absolutely stunning. Um, you'll see her logo on the front here, this fantastic knitting octopus, which I love. Uh, so this base is 85% merino, 15% silk. It has a beautiful luster to it, but more than anything else, good lord, is it soft and squishy. I can see these two working together so beautifully in a colourwork hat project. They'd make a stunning, stunning strain soon hat, for instance. Um, but just, I saw these two together, I could not possibly resist them. So hopefully you love them too, and um, they could be winging your way very soon. But that is not all, no indeed, for there are a couple of other skeins I picked up as well. The first of those is a yarn that captured my attention ever since I saw Amy of the Stranded podcast bring some of this back last year. And I had to make sure that I made a beeline for it this year because I just found it so interesting and wanted to see some of it for myself. So this is the Yin Yang yarn by Loop Fibre Company. It is a worsted weight yarn with 220 yards of yardage on there, 100% extra fine merino, and it is in the blood colourway. But what you may not be able to appreciate right now until I hold it a little bit closer is, look at that, it is a gorgeous kind of two-plied, slightly barber pole yarn. You have two, and this is a reasonably low contrast skein. There were other skeins that were a little bit more dramatic, but there are these two colours woven together. You have this dark burgundy and a plum with the two of them woven in together. And I just think it's such an interesting, interesting yarn. Whether um, this be turned into mitts, whether it be turned into perhaps a hat, I can see it working really, really well. And you'll spot that I have a skein of this in a slightly different colour for myself a little bit later on. But yes, there is also this yarn here and I just thought it was too beautiful not to bring home. But as you may also be aware, Rhinebeck is very much home to some of the sheepier wools as well. And so on the Saturday evening, I stopped by Jill Draper's open studio and picked up a skein of her Rockwell yarn. This is Rockwell in the Bing cherry colourway and it is the most incredible red. Now Jill Draper's colours are stunning, do not get me wrong, but this one genuinely took my breath away. There's a little bit of barber polling in this one too. Clearly I was having a bit of a moment with that and I hope it's an effect that you love. Um, but certainly you can see here just the depth of colour in this. When this is knit up, it will be just astonishingly beautiful. Um, so as you can see, this is a Cormo Merino blend. This is, as I say, her Rockwell base, which I believe is around about a DK to a worsted. 
Um, in terms of yardage, yeah, 280 yards. So perhaps more of a sort of sport to a DK. But um, yeah, just such a beautiful yarn. I definitely couldn't pass this one up at all. And so there you have it. You have these four skeins of yarn in a series of colourways that now I come to look at it does look slightly festive. That wasn't my intention. <laughs> Um, clearly I was just having a bit of a moment for green and then definitely a bit of a moment for these reds and the slight kind of barber pulling effect over here. Um, I hope you love it and as I say this along with the tote bag and the pins will be going to one lucky winner in that vicarious Rhinebecking giveaway thread so if you do um, want to get involved I do urge you to go on over there and make a post and hopefully be in with the chance of winning. One thing I do just want to touch on very quickly, so I posted those giveaway prizes over on my Instagram feed a couple of days ago, so if you do follow me over there, you'll have had a little sneak peek, but hopefully now you've had a chance to see them in a bit more detail. A couple of really kind people were lovely enough to leave comments that said, you know, thank you so much, this is very generous, and I do just want to mention something around that here. So as of earlier this year, I think around about sort of May or June time, I switched monetization on over here on this channel. That means that um, now with each episode you'll see a little pre-roll and advert that comes up up front. I have very little control over what it is but you will see that right there. And um, I do get a tiny bit of revenue from that. Um, it's not a huge amount but what it does allow me to do is put that money towards prize packages such as this. I mentioned that Tani Casey had very, very generously contributed that bag to the giveaway uh, and that that was done so free of charge, for which I'm incredibly grateful. But what I do try to do is ensure that I am paying makers wherever possible. Now, that's something that I choose to do personally. Everybody is different. Everyone's YouTube channel is different. I make absolutely no aspersions as to what anybody else chooses to do. However, as someone who is clearly very privileged, has a lot of yarn and has a reasonably decent disposable income, I want to make sure that I am giving back to makers wherever possible. And it also means that I am able to um, honestly be quite choosy with the makers that I support. And so, um, yes, I, I just want to be transparent with you that the, the monetization that comes from this YouTube channel tends to go into giveaways or any kind of postage that I need to do and um, so for that I am very grateful for your support. So right, yes, here we are in the middle of the podcast and I barely even noticed that we were getting through things. I feel as though we have a couple of just kind of standard bits of order to get through. The first of those is somewhat bizarrely what I'm wearing because <laughs> I was rooting around this morning. It is a bit chillier here in the UK today and so I was having a bit of a think about what it was I wanted to wear for this week's podcast and I stumbled across a t-shirt that I have not thought about in a very long time. It is knitting themed and therefore I will stand up and show it to you because if nothing else it will probably give you a good chuckle. Um, it's not a Rhinebeck t-shirt. I do have a couple of those that I purchased when I was out there this time round. This is a little bit older than that. I'm pretty sure it was bought from Redbubble a while ago now. It may well still be kicking around as something that you can find on the interwebs. But um, certainly post Rhinebeck, this is very much where my mental state was. Allow me to stand up and show you. Yes, indeed. I like to party. And by party... I mean stay at home and knit. <laughs> there you have it. I mean it feels entirely, entirely appropriate. There are some little yarn balls across the top here and um, yeah I think I think it's fair to say that as a hobby tended to be favoured by introverts after a weekend as crazy, as chaotic, as overstimulating as Rhinebeck there's a lot of us that do just want to stay home and knit. <laughs> do not get me wrong, it was a tremendous weekend, but good lord, there was an awful lot going on. Not least of which was the Glorious Gold Long, which I will come to a little bit later. Um, so this is what I'm wearing. In terms of what I've been working on, I mean, 
it's so little, I barely even think it's worth mentioning. However, I do have a new cast on and I am reasonably far along with it and I have already mentioned it up front and therefore it's only fair that I showcase it to you just now. So this is a project that is living in a project bag that is so incredibly special to me because um, I mentioned previously that this time around when I went up to Rhinebeck, I was staying in a house with a few friends of mine. These are friends that I've met through Ravelry forums absolutely just years ago now. And um, they are delightful and incredible people who I have had the just joy and benefit of getting to know over the last few years. I got to meet them in person for the first time last year and stay with them and see more of them again this year. One of those wonderful individuals is Emily who is bookcase hat over on Ravelry and Emily Caroline over on Instagram and um, she felt the need to furnish all of us who were staying in the house with these most beautiful little hand sewn bags. Now Emily doesn't have an Etsy shop. I don't believe she makes these for sale and so I'm not doing this to rub your nose in it but more just as a kind of a I love this so much and it's so very special to me and it's got all the little animals on it. Look it's little fall animals. It's got a little fall hedgehog and a little fall fox and you can't see them properly because I've gone very high pitched. Um, but yeah it's all the little fall creatures and I love it and of course I went for one that had a gold zip because how could I possibly not. Um, but yes, so this is very dear to me. Thank you, Emily. You're the best. Um, and inside there's more full, there's a little bit of full leaves, there's some full sweaters, there's a little full cactus and some socks. It's just, I love it. Um, but in here I have the project that I was working on pretty much consistently throughout the Rhinebeck period. And it's something that's so wholly unlike me as to be entirely remarkable. Um, yes, I cast on and have been working on socks. I know. I know. I know. I have no excuse. Um, I will show you this one here because it's obviously uh, managed to be a little bit better completed. I could even treat you to a sock blocker. Just a second. Right, there we go. This is a little bit easier to see now. And my beautiful sock blockers, I have, of course, to mention up front. These are wooden stock blockers from Ainsworth and Prynne, which is from The Knitting Shed. They are a British yarn store who also make and dye some of their own yarns. And I love this little guy. He is just adorable. There's a pair, they came together. I bought these at think Unravel last year. Um, I love them. They're perfect. Um, they come in all different sizes and uh, yeah I am a UK size 7 and these fit my socks perfectly. So this is the first of my two socks. The yarns are just stunning. Obviously I'm on brand with my yarns. The contrast colour that you can see here is leftover drizzle that I used in my Zweig earlier on this year. The yarn is from the Hay Sister Yarn Company um, who unfortunately are no longer dying and so apologies for that. Um, it is leftovers. I have um, enough to do the other sock and perhaps a tiny bit into a blanket or some kind of scrappy project at some point. Um, but yes, it just matched this main yarn here too perfectly for me to shy away from using it and the main yarn which now this beautiful yarn that deserves a glamour shot all of its own is by Dusty Dimples she is a fantastic UK based hand dyer this is her sock base which is a 75-25% merino nylon sock blend and the colourway is You Can Find Me in Cuba this is a skein that she so incredibly generously gifted me when I saw her at Unravel this year with Hannah of the Corner of Craft. Uh, I will have talked about it in a previous episode, my Unravel episode from earlier on in the year, but I couldn't resist knitting it up any longer because if nothing else, how perfectly do these two go together? And given it was a little nod to all things gold and to all things fall, it just felt too perfect as a project. And so sock knitting, look, I'm not gonna lie, those amongst you who've been around for a while will know I'm not much of a sock knitter. I'm pretty sure this is the first sock that I've shown on the podcast. <laughs> um, it's, it's not exactly my normal, but what I will say is 
when you're a bit stressed out, when you're on a plane, when you've got a lot going on in your head and actually you just want to sit and work on something and in my case kind of stress knit over the course of an eight hour flight in a metal tube, um, it is a great project to have with you. I cast on at the ribbing here, um, just as we were due, no, about 30 minutes after we'd taken off in uh, from London Heathrow, managed to get most of the leg through, uh, man, words, managed to get through most of the leg on the flight, also managed to do the heel in pretty much total darkness on the flight, um, which says more to my stubbornness and perseverance than it does my skill, trust me. Um, not least because this is the second heel that I had to knit. The first one, I was trying a slightly different pattern, a technique, didn't really get on with it, left a few holes, so I thought I would put that to one side and go back to what I knew. I haven't done a fishlet's kiss heel in about, geez, two and a half, maybe three years, um, but it is muscle memory. It kind of comes back to you after a little while, although it does take a little while, so don't look at some of these stitches too closely. <laughs> um, I did also, for the first time, put in a couple of increases and decreases. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on that side. Let me show you here. So you might just be able to spot there's a tiny little line on this side and then a couple afterwards there. Um, what I found is that this part of my foot, um, I have quite a high arch. So what you tend to find is that this part of the sock stretches to, to kind of slightly, it's not uncomfortable, but it doesn't look lovely um, because the stitches right over that top part of my ankle are quite stretched. And so what I wanted to do was to add in just a couple of extra increases on one side and then decreases following it to give me a tiny bit more wiggle room there. And certainly I tried this on very briefly. It fits really nicely indeed. So all I did with that, and because I'm sure people will ask about a sort of formula or recipe, I don't really have a pattern that I use for this. I do use the fish lips kiss heel pattern for the heel itself, um, but I cast on a knit um, 64 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needle, which is a US size, oh crumbs. Oh, if in doubt, check the needles. It is a US size one. I am using, as you'll be able to see here, my little nine inch circular needles. It's how I prefer to knit them. I know a lot of people don't get on with it. I know that this, it's a style that doesn't necessarily suit everyone, but I do find the way that I hold my needles, it tends to work quite well with that. Um, I don't have a particular issue with hand cramping as the fact that I was able to, to bash out a fairly significant portion of a sock should be able to attest. But um, yeah, it's it, it works for me. You do you. You want a magic loop? That's totally fine. No judgment. You want a DP in it? I mean, a little bit of judgment, but no. Um, but but it's, it's my preference. So as I say, cast on 64 stitches. Um, I knit roughly, um, I think... I usually knit about 60 rows on the leg, and then for UK size seven, maybe another 65 on the foot itself before going into a toe. Um, so with this one, because I wanted to add in a few increase rounds, I got to row 54, I do just count, and then I, on the 55th, no, sorry, on the 54th row, added in an increase either side of where I was planning to do the heel, and then again on the 56th row, and again on the 58th row. And um, yeah, then just started my heel on the 60th row because that's how I like to do things. But that's pretty much what I was working on for the entirety of my time away. I did get a fair bit through this on the flight out. I then finished off the um, foot and the toe one evening when we were upstate at Rhinebeck and then cast on for the second just before heading home. There wasn't a huge amount of time for knitting in evenings and so on, largely because um, I was doing a little bit of kind of checking posts and uh, checking up on social media and I'd been doing quite a lot of driving and also I think by that point it was just about squishing some of the pretties, which I really do need to get on to because good lord, there's a little bit to get through. And so without any further ado, let me move into my Rhinebeck recap and a little bit of acquisitions as well. So as you may have known, I was traveling out to Rhinebeck on the Wednesday. So the Wednesday preceding the festival itself, which I believe was the 16th. Um, I flew out in the afternoon. I got to the airport 
absolutely fine. Um, the weather was biblically awful and um, I know that both Meredith and myself, we were flying in to different airports but meeting up that evening at our Airbnb. I know both of us had fairly bumpy landings as part of it. I lucked out in that I was on a flight that Broadly speaking, most of the economy class was full of children on a choir trip. And it's fair to say that there were a few children that were terribly unwell. So that was awesome. Um, but yeah, it was a very, very blumpy flight. Unfortunately, we arrived in the midst of, you know, horizontal rain and high winds, um, which is exactly the sort of conditions that you want when it is well past midnight in your head and you have to go and pick up a rental car to drive it back to the hotel, to the um, Airbnb. So I did that. It was fine. Lived to tell the tale and um, got to catch up with Meredith, who I just... I love her. Those of you who watched my recap last year will know that she and I travelled around a little bit following Rhinebeck last year. We didn't have the time to do that this time round, but we did get to spend a little bit of time together right up front, which was magnificent. We were staying in Brooklyn in the bed area, and so the next morning got up, went for a little bit of a wander, went down to um, Crown Heights to meet up with another friend of mine, Connie, who is Lemon Tangos, and just seeing Connie again was the absolute best. Those of you who've been watching in previous weeks will know I've mentioned Connie. She was the inspiration behind a few of us knitting the farmhouse cardigan by Amy Christoffers. And indeed, we had a farmhouse cardigan rainbow at Rhinebeck uh, with our Ravelry group on the Saturday, which just made my heart sing. So um, yes, got to catch up with Connie, had some amazing lunch over at a restaurant called Hunky Dory, which was incredibly tasty. Um, right in the midst of Crown Heights in Brooklyn and then Meredith and I made our way gently down towards Brooklyn General. Brooklyn General is one of the yarn stores we visited last year. It was no one should have favourites, but we liked it very much. Let's be very clear about that. We also stopped in at the Brooklyn Pharmacy, spelt with an F, because artistic license, um, which is an amazing ice cream parlor. It is one of the kind of more traditional ice cream parlors and sort of pharmacy type places um, that serves incredible kind of ice cream sundaes and so on. So we might have gone there and had a small cardiac arrest in the form of ice cream, <laughs> which was amazing. Once over at Brooklyn General, we were greeted by Carlene, who is Carlene G on Instagram and Ravelry, who I met for the first time last year, and it was great saying hello to her as well. Her projects are just stunning. I know she works in a wonderful yarn shop, and it must be hard not to create stunning things with that much inspiration around you. But my word, just her colour combinations and styling just knocks it out of the park. But while we were there, we spent a good while rooting around squishing things, just enjoying some of their incredible selection. Now, they were already going to be at Rhinebeck over the course of the weekend, uh, but one of the vendors who wasn't going to be there was Magpie Yarns, and so I did have a little scoot through and um, was thoroughly enabled in a fashion that I was not anticipating by Meredith, who uh, made it very clear that the yarn I had in my arms and was cradling like a tiny child should very much come home with me, if for no other reason than human decency. <laughs> so um, it, it had to become so. So um, the first of my purchases was made pre Rhinebeck. This is, I pre-gamed pretty well <laughs> this time round. And so, um, yeah, I will show that to you just now. And you're there going, Caroline, do you know what? It's fine. So you picked up a skein or two of yarn before you even got to the festival. That's fine. That's totally normal. I mean, sure, sure, totally normal. Seven skeins. Sweater quantity. Um, I couldn't resist. I mean, come on now. This, I'm... I'm not going to be so bold as to call this gold, all right? I get it. This is definitely olive green. I'm happy with my life choices. But... Yeah, you know, it's it's got a goldish tinge to it, I'm just saying. Um, this is a base that I hadn't seen of theirs before. This is Magpie in the Nest Worsted base, and it is beautiful. So Nest Worsted is 100% non-superwash Coriadale, and it is worsted, as the name would suggest, and this colourway is the Twilight Brew colour, and it is just 
Again, the depth of colour in this is stunning. You can see that there are some slightly more olive, um, sort of golden or brownish tones in here. I know I said brown. It's all right. Get over it. It's fine. <laughs> Um, but it is just stunning. It's 210 yards to 100 grams and I just, oh, it's so deliciously squishy. This will be cables, hence the yardage that I have here as well, because seven skeins is definitely enough to do some kind of cabled goodness. I, I just want this snuggly and draped about my person because you'll probably see over the course of this trip, I have finally come to terms with the fact that I have an autumnal colour palette. I've been trying so hard for so long to make other colours work for me and you know from the the light blues here to the sort of more pastel-y colours up here and some of the Volmeiser ones that I've got in here, like I just need to embrace the fact that autumnal colours sludgy greens, dark reds, some of the golds, maybe a bit, a little bit of navy and so on. That's, it's kind of where I'm at and I just need to embrace that now because mint green is never going to happen. <laughs> it's fine, I'm coming to terms with it now, I promise. So yes, this was the first sweater quantity I picked up, the first of a few and um, we're gonna return to this later because, uh, funny story. <laughs> From Brooklyn General, we made our way back towards Crown Heights and met up with a few more friends. We met up with Claire, who's Transient Meow, and Vanessa, who is Nessa Knits over on Instagram. And again, friends of ours that we had an opportunity to catch up and spend a bit more time with. We went to an amazing restaurant for dinner. We went to Bunmeister, which has two of my favourite things in the world combined into one, which is uh, Korean fried chicken in like a soy or spicy sauce and um, steamed buns together at last in beautiful, glorious, succulent harmony. It was divine. And I am still having lustful thoughts about those buns and I cannot lie. But after that, we went home. We had a bit of packing to do ahead of the following day. And um, that following morning, I was driving around with the hire car to pick up a few of the folks. Uh, Vanessa lived a few streets away, so came and met up with us. We grabbed some coffee and I drove down and picked up Claire en route. Now, it may sound a little bit strange to have the non-American driving the hire car. Um, I've done quite a lot of driving in the US and Canada in the past. It's something I'm totally fine with. We'd already booked a hire car anyway for our portion of the stay, Meredith and I, when we sort of booked our travel plans earlier in the year, and we were staying so close, it made perfect sense. It was a little bit more crowded. We had Jess with us as well on the way back down, but we made it work. Um, if I can avoid having to have a minivan next year, that would be awesome. <laughs> But we had a Volkswagen Jetta, otherwise known as Car Scotchigan, because Scottish, and three wonderful women from Michigan. Makes sense. Um, we were very much on our way. Now, the GPS likes to play games with us a little bit, so we had a small kind of heart and mouth moment where we put in our destination and it went from being kind of, you'll arrive there at 11.20 to 11.40 and then 11.50 and then 12 and 12.04. We had tickets for the 12 till two time slot, so you know, that was a bit stressful, but we got there in good time in the end. We jumped on the shuttle, we made our way to India Untangled and got there not long after the doors had opened, but there was still a bit of a queue outside, so perfect timing. Indie Untangled. This, I believe, is the second year that it's been in the um, Socrates Performing Arts Centre. It was a great venue. I found that the time slots for all that, um, not everyone is a huge fan of them. What I do think they do a very, very good job of doing is keeping things kind of busy, but not like kind of crazy penned in, lots of shuffling past, trying to get through and see things. Um, it does do quite a good job of creating a good shopping environment. Now, I appreciate that makes it a little bit more exclusive an event in terms of something that you've got to get tickets for, um, and it's a little bit harder for those who perhaps are making minds up at the last minute or a little bit later on, but um, it does mean that it is a, a really kind of well-managed event. Now, um, in terms of getting around and seeing all of the vendors there, Two hours is not a lot of time, so you do need to prioritise, you do need to make sure that you're getting your stuff together, but um, yes, I was able to pick up a few bits there, so I will run those past you now. 
I mentioned as part of the Vicarious Rhinebeck giveaway that one of the first stands I went to was Nerdbird Makery along with the Dye Project. When I was at Nerdbird Makery there were a couple of things there that caught my eye that I really really could not resist making my own. The first of those was this project bag because it's just stunning. I love the fabric, I love everything about it. I will hold it up so you can see and yeah, this is a fabric where printed on it are a series of different makers from different backgrounds, of different races, of different levels of ability. And there are knitters and crocheters and makers and sewists and spinners and stitchers. And it's just wonderful. It's very, very inclusive and empowering and exactly just exactly what you would expect from such a fantastic company. Inside it is canvas lined, there are these two huge pockets and it's a drawstring bag which frankly is one of my favourites. So yeah, you can pull it closed, you've still got the handles to carry around with it and best of all there's this nice waxed canvas bottom to keep it nice and clean. So yeah, couldn't resist this bag at all, at all. I did also mention and showed that I bought a Nerdbird Makery pin. I have one of those for myself as well, which says, nevertheless, she knitted on it. And indeed, that's not the only thing that I came away with in that regard. While there, I spotted that they also had t-shirts with the same motif on there, so I could not resist. And so came home with my very own, nevertheless, she knitted t-shirt, and I love it. There you are, you can see the pattern itself in all its glory. This is a really lovely t-shirt, actually. It's quite a slim fit. It's a v-neck design, and um, yeah, this is the size large that I went for, which I think around about uh, 42 to 43 inch chest, which is pretty spot on for me. So this came in a fairly um, sort of significant range of sizes. I do believe that Nerdbird Makery, they do make them available from time to time. So definitely worth checking out their site if you want to take a look. But while we're on the subject of t-shirts, I also need to show a t-shirt that I bought, not at Indian Tangled, but ahead of time. That said, Shelley Can, who makes these t-shirts, was at the festival at Indian Tangled and was selling these beauties. This was her Rhinebeck t-shirt for this year. Um, it was themed to coincide with the anniversary of Woodstock and therefore a little bit crazy and psychedelic. And of course, the fact that it's orange, or indeed, I mean, more accurately, let's just call it gold, because them's my want, um, it was something I could not resist. So I got this. I really, really love it. Um, it's a little bit bigger than I was expecting. That's what happens when you buy things ahead of time on the internet. Um, I bought this size extra large. It is definitely more of a nightshirt on me than probably a sort of general t-shirt, but I love it all the same. And on the back is Shelly Can's little logo there which you can see. Shelly Can is a fantastic maker. She makes all sorts of things, whether it be pins, whether it be bags. She made some of the bags that were so popular around Rhinebeck last year. And again, this year, beautiful deep Indian tangled green bag. So um, yes, love that t-shirt. And I uh, hope those of you who were there were able to pick one up too. Ahead of India Untangled, one of the makers that I was really keen to stop by and see um, was a dyer that I had seen post on Instagram and just what they do and the way that they do it is so completely different. It's very unique. It's not something I've seen very much of at all. Um, and this is yarn by the Blue Brick Dye Works Company. This is a skein of their autumnal colorway and while it may look a little bit sort of crazy and variegated here in the skein, this is actually dyed as a gradient. So from the top, it's in this beautiful kind of deep red color that you have here. It fades through the orangey red into more of these golden tones and eventually into the olivey green. And there are posts over on Instagram, I might even pop one of those in here just now so you can see it, of the projects that have been knit up with this. It comes in a range of different weights um, and yardages. This is the Killarney Sock, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 500 yards, which certainly means it is sizable enough for me to be able to get a cowl or um, just something similarly kind of beautiful to snuggle around my neck. But I just, 
I couldn't resist this. This was one of a few special skeins that were on offer at the Indie Untangled booth right at the front. Um, I believe that they were made available specifically for Indie Untangled and I just, I had to make sure that I grabbed one of these. The company themselves are based in Canada and therefore with shipping and customs and so on, it's sometimes a bit difficult for me to get my hands on this. So I wanted to make sure I capitalized on that when I was there, but yeah, in love with this skein. And as you can tell, really embracing the autumnal. This is going to be a trend. Another dyer that I was keen to see in real life was the Earl Grey Fibre Company. This is a dyer who again had sort of popped up on my Instagram feed, I'd heard a few people talk about, and sure enough when I got there her colourways, her yarns, they did not disappoint at all. These two beauties had to come home with me. I don't know that I'd necessarily want to use them together but I kind of love them together all the same. I will pop them up a little bit closer for you to see. So here you have it. These are both on her Oolong DK base because tea themes are for the win. The colourway here, the pinkish colour, is sweater weather, perfect. And on the left is the rose gold colourway. It has these beautiful pinks running through it, it has some golds in there, but all in all it is just perfectly bronzy and stunning. Whereas Sweater Weather has these incredible speckles, it's got some pinkish hues, it has a little bit of the same kind of orangey gold in there too. And I just absolutely love them. They're incredibly soft, they're 100% superwash merino and 231 yards a piece. So they could go together as I mentioned in a hat project, they could end up going really nicely together as part of a colour work project, but I couldn't I couldn't resist them. And in fact, the rose gold in particular was the one that spoke to me and then this one was really not too far behind. So um, clearly, Kristen of Vullenvine, I was um, definitely channeling a little bit of you on the mauve front here because it's just so beautiful. But yeah, these two together, absolutely love them. Next up is another dyer that I am a massive fan of. I brought some skeins of hers back from India Untangled last year, which was the first time I had the chance to experience her beautiful yarns in person. And going back again this year, I couldn't resist. Thank you also so, so much to, um, there was an incredible person working in her booth as well. Now I am dreadful with names at the best of times, but with that much kind of like overstimulus going on as well, it's doubly bad. I really want to say your name was Julie and if I'm sorry, like if I'm wrong, I'm so sorry about that. I really, really am. But um, I mean, other than helping me and enabling me to purchase this, she did point out that as soon as she knew that there were golds going into this booth, that they would be mine. And sure enough, it did come to pass because look at these two beauties together. This is her Rooibos colourway and this is, I should say right up front, this is Landstring's yarn who are oh, just, one, she's a wonderful person, two, she's an incredibly talented dyer and just, I mean, I mean come on now. So this, as I mentioned, is her Rooibos colourway on a couple of different bases. You have at the top here Utopia DK, it's 100% superwash merino and a DK weight at around about 231 yards, which is 211 metres to that 100 grams. On the bottom, however, you have her feather lace, and this is a mohair silk blend. So 70% fine mohair, 30% silk, and you get 459 yards or 420 metres. These two, I mean, come on. Now, not only do they look incredible together, I mean, they have to be used together clearly. Now, the, so the superwash merino is incredibly soft and squishy as it is. Couple that with this just beautifully, oh, the depth of colour, just words. Um, couple the two of these together and you will have the most beautiful, fluffy, squishable project. So this will be a hat at some point. I don't know which one. Not my prerogative right now. Right now, the prerogative is squishing the pretties and just, whoa, possibly rubbing my face in them a little bit. One of the very best things about festivals and shows is that you have an opportunity to go along and meet and connect with people in person that you only really get a chance to speak to sort of online the rest of the time. Now, I did have the luck and the fortune to meet up with Gabby of Once Upon a Corrigy at last year's festival, but this year she was vending in her own stand, her own booth, and vending her beautiful yarns. And 
To go and see a wall of Gabby's yarn is just like going into the most incredible, I want to say sort of sweet shop if that's your thing, or like perfume boutique if that's your thing, or gin bottles, like I'm not here to judge, but basically it's fucking incredible is what it is. So you go in and you see just this wall of incredible kind of like moody and jewel tones and just her aesthetic is stunning and so I did get a chance to ponder and play before finally deciding to pick up this combination here. This is all her ravishing colourway on again a couple of different bases. I have in this hand her Tesla base which is 70% Superwash BFL, 20% Silk and 10% Cashmere. It's beautiful. It's a fingering weight so it's around about 438 yards to the skein and I have as you can see two skeins of that whereas in this hand I have two skeins of her fig lace base and this again is the ravishing colourway in 70% kid mohair and 30% silk. Allow me to hold these up together so you can appreciate them in their beauteous and stunning glory. I mean come on now. Now it is rare that I purchase yarn with a very specific project in mind. However, these will make the most perfect combination for a diaphanous raglan by Jessie May Designs. I've shown it here in the podcast. I'll pop a picture of it here just so you can remember it. But I mean, I mean, I mean, come on now. Come on. It has to be. It's got to be a thing, right? Because it's beautiful. And... I just, I love these so much. Gabby, you're an absolute legend and your yarns are beautiful. And it was so lovely to say hello to you and also to your fiance, which was a delight in and of itself, as well as Samantha Guerin, who, those of you who watch Gabby's podcast, which is the Once Upon a Corgi podcast, which if you do not watch, please do, because it's wonderful and peaceful and joyful and all good things. Um, Gabby knits quite a few of Samantha's designs, and I know that Samantha's participated in a few of our cows over the last year. Her name I immediately recognised from having been in a couple of the uh, galleries that I'd put together, and so it was wonderful to meet her in person as well. Thank you all so much for making it such a welcoming stand, both in terms of the yarn pretties and the wonderful people there too. It was really good to say hi. And then I think my last purchase at Indie Untangled was one I really couldn't shy away from. Um, Lola Bean Yarn Company, again, is another person I've been following over on Instagram. And when you see a skein like this out of the corner of your eye, you can't say no to it. Now, I'm not really much of a red person, or rather I haven't been, but again, I'm trying to embrace this autumnal colour palette, particularly the orangey red side of that spectrum. I've been dallying a little bit too much in the blue reds for, for a while now, and they just don't work on me as well as this will. So I think this needs to be a hat. I think it will be a beautiful hat, but this is a skein of her 100% Superwash Merino DK weight yarn. It's her Pinto Bean base, and it is the Refried Beans colorway, which is an excellent name. It is 250 yards to 115 grams, and therefore a true DK weight, and it is just stunning. Let me hold it up. You can see again the depth of colour, the amazing saturation that she's got in here is just perfect. Her little logo, which I love. And um, yeah, couldn't resist, could not resist this in the slightest. It is beautiful. So I think that is pretty much my Indie Untangled haul. Now, as I mentioned, uh, we were only there for a couple of hours, so you know, doing pretty well for myself in that regard. Um, we finished up, we headed out of the uh, hall itself. We did a little bit of tomfoolery and taking some pictures around in the beautiful gardens in behind the festival hall there, and then made our way with the shuttle bus over to um, Perfect Blend, the local yarn store in Sogarty's as well, and then had some lunch at the um, cafe just immediately opposite, 
from there, we popped over to the Rhinebeck Yarn Bazaar. Now, this is an event that started for the first time this year. It's one that I found out about sort of fairly late in the day, but I will confess I definitely wanted to stop by, partly because, as I've already mentioned, I knew that Tani Casey was going to be vending there and I wanted a chance to go and say hi and hug her in person. And I did, and it was magical. It's fair to say that possibly as a result of India Untangled being a ticketed event this year, that um, I, I, I'm not sure if the organisers expected the influx of people that they received, but certainly we got there with about half an hour left of the festival. So we got there about half past five and it ran from two until 6pm. And when we arrived, there was still a very long queue. Now that queue was moving fairly swiftly, but inside it was jam-packed. There were a huge number of people, which is fantastic and great support for the, the various vendors that were on there. But I think it's fair to say that the sort of folk that I was speaking to were all fairly like wide-eyed and this has been a lot, <laughs> which I can wholeheartedly appreciate. But the good news is, as I mentioned, I did get to stop by Tani Casey's booth. So aside from getting to say hi to her, and I'm still wearing the mad grin that I had when I got to see her in person, I was also able to pick up one thing from her. In addition to the tote bag that will be going into our Vicariously Rhinebacking giveaway, I was also able to pick up this crossbody bag. This is a bag that she had been touting over on Instagram, was one of her newer designs. It folds over at the top here, it has a zip, as you can see. <laughs> And inside is her customary sort of really nice sturdy canvas with the pockets that are just in there too. I'm doing a really bad job of showing you it. Um, and either side you have her beautiful leather strap that runs in this gorgeous sort of dark brown colour. So that will go across here because that's how you wear a crossbody bag, Caroline. And you not being able to see it really, really shows it off beautifully. <laughs> here you have it. And um, yeah, again, I just... I love everything that she designs, I love her as a person, and it was wonderful to get a chance to meet her as well. She does do quite a few events over in the US, so please do have a look and check her out. She also is fairly prolific over in her Etsy shop, and details for that I'll make sure I link below. So that was a madcap and crazy first day at Rhinebeck. From there, we went back to the house that we were staying at. Uh, we met up with all of the fabulous women we were staying with, which was wonderful. We stepped out and bought some groceries for the evening, came back in, made ourselves uh, a bit of box mac and cheese, which I've never had before and was entirely happy with that life choice, um, before heading off to bed. And with the next day approaching, made our way to Rhinebeck the following morning. Now the Rhinebeck Rhinebeck Festival is huge. For those of you who've been, you can appreciate that. For those of you who haven't, I can't even begin to describe the scale of this place. There are, I think, four or five fairly sizeable buildings, um, and by that I mean kind of large barn type buildings, long and thin, with vendors down either side and down either side of the centre. And then aside from that, there are maybe another, I want to say 10 or so smaller barns where you have vendors down either side. And um, it's vast. I cannot begin to describe it. So between that and wanting to get around and see a lot of people, it's fair to say not much yarn was purchased on the Saturday. The Saturday my focus was very much seeing a little bit, um, perhaps avoiding some of the main buildings where there always tends to be a bit more of a scrummage on that first day, and instead seeing a little bit more of the barns. Even then I didn't really get to see more than three that first day. I then went to our um, meet up where we were showcasing our farmhouse cardigans in that incredible rainbow of colours. I'll put a picture of that up here on the screen now. It just makes me so happy. So as I mentioned, I knit my farmhouse cardigan in solidarity with a few friends, but particularly in support of Connie, who is Lemon Tangos, who knit the pattern earlier on in the year to wear to Vogue Knitting Live before stating that in the end she didn't go because she didn't feel comfortable attending the event. And um, so we wanted to make sure that we were all there in support of her at this time round. Now, it was such a beautiful day. The weather was stunning, as you could probably see from that photo. And from there, I went over to the Glorious Gold Long Meetup. Now, I, I don't even know where to start with this. I had expected maybe five or 10 people to rock up, um, whether it be for the Podcaster Meetup or whether it be for the Glorious Gold Long Meetup. I was not expecting what happened. Um, thank you 
so much to everybody who turned up on the day. I, I don't even know how many of you there were. I know that there were enough that we had to do two separate group photos because um, timings were a little bit off, but also there were just so many people there. It was insane and I'll put the pictures up here on the screen now for you to enjoy. These are the two group shots that I was able to capture along with a bonus third shot and thank you so much to everyone who turned up wearing their Dunderknit rainbow socks because that made my heart so happy. Honestly I can't even begin to describe how touched and over the moon joy like so much joy bursting out of me I was to be able to see and to meet you all in person for you to be there and showing off your golden solidarity of everyone who was there and anyone who couldn't be it was just the absolute shitting best and I love every last one of you I was dreadful at remembering to take pictures so <laughs> to those of you who did Thank you so much for doing that. I will be posting a couple of them that use the glorious gold along hashtag a little bit later on, but um, please do feel free to tag me in them over on Instagram. I was utterly rubbish at remembering to take pictures with people, particularly if you just sort of came up and we started chatting. Um, I, I always tend to forget to do that when I'm just so excited to say hi to people. So um, thank you so much, honestly. It made my festival in ways I cannot even describe and you're just, you're just the absolute fucking best, so thank you. To those of you who did come up and say hi, a couple of you gave me things and you really didn't need to, it was very, very kind, you absolutely didn't have to at all. I have so completely lost track of names and honestly even faces at this point I was so utterly overwhelmed and overstimulated I know that I did receive this fabulous little stitch marker which as you might be able to see says Rhinebeck or bust which I love it's a little Rhinebeck sweater and the other one that I received which felt entirely appropriate was this one here which says fuck this knit I mean it's perfect so thank you so much to the lovely, very kind and very generous people that gave me those. I really appreciate it. Still true to form, I also received this sticker here, which says Yarn Slut. And again, I'm entirely happy to embrace that as a moniker. Can we see that? Is that focusing? I mean, accurate. <laughs> I was also gifted this pin from The Canadian and The Stranger. Now these are clearly women after my own heart, given the nod that is in their taboos, as well as their respective flags. This is Linda and Sophie, who I believe also have a podcast, so definitely worth checking them out as well. And then similarly, I met up with Whiskey and Wool. Now, Whiskey and Wool put together the most beautiful, I believe it's the Chauncey sweater by Isabel Kramer in this stunning gold colourway for the gold long. We've been watching the progress shots over the last few weeks in the gallery, but again, it was great to meet her in person. I think we spoke very, very briefly last year at Rhinebeck as well. I know I watched her Rhinebeck recap last time round, but she had this incredible idea of making these patches that were effectively her business cards at the festival. And I think that is a great idea. So it was wonderful to see her as well. And look, little gold stitches, it's perfect. While at the gold along, um, I mean, already utterly overwhelmed as I was, I mean, this really went up a notch. So a wonderful woman called Catherine um, was so incredibly kind as to gift me these two skeins of yarn. Now, this yarn is from a Quebec-based yarn dyeing company. This is, uh, the URL is Le Laine May à Part, and I will put a link for that on the screen because goodness knows my French pronunciation is not enough for you to get by on. Um, but the yarn is called May à Part, and it is just astonishingly beautiful. Um, Catherine is part of the duo that dye this yarn together, is part of this yarn company, and um, mentioned that when she saw that her associate had dyed this yarn, that um, she figured it needed to come home with me. And um, the yarn colourway is, for both of these, it is um, Tire or Tire, um, and I believe it's St Catherine. I will hold it up 
for you to be able to see and if your French pronunciation is better than mine then all the better but they are just astonishingly beautiful. They're two different bases so we have here their merino fingering which is 100% superwash extra fine merino and it is approximately 400 meters to the 100 grams and the other is their nuage d'alpaga which is alpaca cloud and it is their baby Suri alpaca 74% and 26% mulberry silk and that is 300 meters to the 50 grams and I mean good lord they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. And look at this little stitch marker in here as well. I mean, this is so incredibly generous. Um, thank you so, so much for gifting me this. I wasn't expecting it in the slightest. It was just wonderful to meet so many of you and you don't need to do shit like this. I mean, it's beautiful and I, I appreciate it more than words can say, but Honestly, the best part in all of it was getting an opportunity to meet you and squish you and say thank you for everything that you gave me in terms of the joy. So it was it was just an absolute fucking delight. Okay, enough of this gushing because I still have yarn to show you and I'm at risk of just dissolving into a puddle at this point. So let's crack on. I did manage to pick up a couple of yarns that day. One set was courtesy of um, one of the barns that I did make it into and the others were courtesy of the Jill Draper Open Studio that evening. So let me grab the first of those to show you. So I'll be the first to confess that I did very little prep for Rhinebeck this year. At least last year when I knew I was attending, I had a quick skirt around to see who some of the vendors were to understand who I might want to go and see. This year was very much a free for all. I flung myself at booths and walked away seeing what had stuck to put a very indelicate phrase on it. But um, what it did mean is that I was able to sort of see and spend time looking at dyers that had never really uh, kind of been on my radar before. And one of those dyers was Dragonfly Fibres. Now I've heard a lot of people talk about her and um, I've heard a lot of good things about her yarns. And so when I went to the booth, I mean, there was no way whatsoever that it was going to disappoint. And as it was, I walked away with something slightly unexpected. I walked away with four skeins and therefore a sweater quantity of her um, Traveller DK base. So this is, oh, I believe it's a sort of sport to a DK because it's around about 280 yards um, to a skein. And this is in her Winterfell colorway and it's beautiful. Now, if I hold it up, the camera wants it to be slightly bluer than it is in reality. I think reality is it's a very, very dark charcoal gray but it does have slight undertones, whether it's blue, whether it's green, whether it's slightly purplish, I'm not totally sure, but it is, I mean, whatever it is, it's fucking stunning. So I thought I would be very practical and put together a few skeins that were frankly just, I mean, the opportunities with this feel endless. So I have a good sweater quantities amount to be able to do something with it, but I don't know what but it's gonna be cute and just so wearable. So um, yeah, really looking forward to that. If I didn't mention, it is 100% superwash merino, this base as well. So squishy and delicious and uh, yeah, tremendously practical. But from there, as I mentioned, we made our way over to Jill Draper's open studio. Jill Draper has a studio over in Kingston, which is the other side of the bridge from Rhinebeck. It's a little bit of a slog getting over that bridge in uh, Rhinebeck traffic, as those of you who were also unfortunate enough to drive may have noticed, but um, it did mean that we were able to catch sight of some of these beauties. And again, I showcased some Rockwell earlier on in the episode as part of the giveaway. I couldn't walk away without any for myself. Now this is probably the most kind of non-autumnal, slightly out of comfort zone colorway that I went for, but you'll see why, because it's fucking gorgeous. This is her sea bottom colorway on the Rockwell base. So again, this is her sport base. It is Cormo Merino crossbred wool, and it is around about 280 yards to the, to the skein, but look at how pretty it is. I hold it up here and the camera focuses, you will be able to see again the slight kind of two-tone variegation in the yarn. I mean, it is stunning. Now, I know that Meredith picked some of this up as well. Um, we weren't exactly fighting over the respective fifth skein, but you know, there was there was tension there. 
there wasn't tension, it was fine. But um, yes, so I have four skeins of this, which I think should be enough to make a sort of close fitting, fairly simple pullover. I do think with this, in all honesty, because of the variegation and the difference that's in the yarn, having something that's quite simple as a pattern feels like a good way to go. So perhaps a really nice, simple kind of set in sleeve, round neck um, sweater, uh, that's a little bit close fitting would be divine in this yarn so um, that will be in my future at some point I am sure. I mentioned that I had a few options for what I wanted to cast on as part of the Blame Dungeon It Along and this is the first of those. So Emily who is Bookcase Hat I mentioned earlier on in the episode as being the wonderful individual that made those bags for us. Um, she had been wearing a Felix pullover. In fact, she had been wearing a couple of Felix pullovers. I'll put a picture here on the screen. This is another pattern by Amy Christoffers, who publishes patterns under the Savory Knitting brand. She also designed the Farmhouse Cardigan. But the Felix pullover is a beautiful, it's slightly cropped, slightly boxy shape. I mean, all things that you know I love. And it has that amazingly beautiful little eyelet detail along the raglan shaping. Now, when I was in Jill Draper's open studio, there was a yarn there that was clearly perfect for it and therefore it came home with me and it's this and you might think this is slightly out of my comfort zone actually I really love this colour. Um, I knit a no frills pullover last year in a sort of movie pink and it surprised me how much I, I really enjoyed that colour on me and this here is her mini empire Heather's base in the lipstick colourway. Empire is a base that she dyes on which are the huge kind of yarn babies that you see uh, that Jill Draper has dyed on. The Heather's version is as the name would suggest, a slightly more heathered version of it and in mini skeins. It is a worsted to iron weight and it's 100% Rambouillet wool and you get around about 213 yards or 195 metres to a skein. Now I have been assured that four skeins of this should be enough for a Felix pullover. Um, well, we'll see how we go on that front. It may have slightly less ease than the pattern perhaps intends, but I reckon I should be good on that front. I'm not going to hold it together with mohair. If I were to do that, I think I'd end up with a pattern and a sweater that is almost identical to my no frills. So having it without the mohair, I think will make a difference, but this is so squishy. <laughs> and I'm very much looking forward to working with this. So this is probably going to be my Blame Dungeon It Along cast on, or at least one of them. After the open studio, we went back to the house, we began resting up. It's fair to say that between quite a lot of peopling, quite a lot of driving, sitting in traffic, trying to get back and forth over bridges, and just the immense overstimulation that was the festival, I was fairly wiped by that point in time. So I did a little bit of sort of like staring at a wall over the course of the evening. Uh, we enjoyed tacos, which was amazing. And um, then it was a fairly sort of bleary eyed stumbling into bed and getting some well earned rest. The next morning we were out, certainly not crack of dawn, a little bit later in the morning and went back along to the festival and this is really the day that I got to go around and see some of the things that I'd missed the day before. Sunday from my two years experience is much quieter than the Saturday at Rhinebeck and it was further compounded by the fact that the weather on the Sunday um, was certainly a lot greyer, a little bit drizzlier at times than the Saturday had been which was far more kind of blue skies and bright brilliant sunshine. Um, it was just a bit more chilled out all round which I very much appreciated. It did give me an opportunity to go and do a little bit more shopping and so I took my chance. A few friends the day before had spotted a pop-up booth alongside one of the barns because Clearly, having buildings and barns is not enough, that you also need pop-up stands outside those. Um, it's vast. Did I mention that? Vast. But um, this is a yarn company that had just launched their new yarn lines. And um, I spent so much time squishing friends' yarns and their purchases the night before that it seemed only polite that I go and get some of my fucking own. So um, I came away with a few skeins of this. This is the Hudson & West Company Forge yarn. It is, I'm going to say a sort of DK to worsted weight yarn. Um, and this is, uh, where am I? It is 100, sorry, it is 70% merino and 30% Coriadale and it's 235 yards to a skein. I have five skeins of this and I will hold some of them up for you to see just now. And you're looking at me now going, Caroline, 
this is this is interesting um don't want to put too fine a point on it but um i feel like we've seen you hold this color up before and i feel like this is a color that is very similar to something else you bought do you know what you're not wrong so <laughs> First of all, I do want to say a massive thank you to, um, there was a lady in the booth who, again, I'm so sorry, my name, my memory for names is, is shocking, and um, we bumped into you a few times, and you were very, very kind, you were from the UK as well, and um, I believe you were reaching for this yarn just as I, my friend, kind of, no, slow motion wrenched it from your grasp, and, you know, you were very polite and very kind about it, but I still feel slightly bad for stealing this away from you. <laughs> um, I feel even worse when you consider that, um, one second. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is the nest worsted that I picked up from Magpie Fibres at Brooklyn General, and this is the Hudson & Co Forge yarn. Um, I mean, they're not identical, but they're probably not far enough apart for me to be able to justify this to you know, anyone that isn't a very committed stasher of yarns. Um, this this is definitely slightly more in the gold wheelhouse, this is more in the green wheelhouse, but I mean, they're not they're not dissimilar. So this is obviously uh, Coriadale, this is a Coriadale Merino blend, but you know, it's fine, it's fine. The yardage is different, I have seven skeins of this, five skeins of this, this will make a different sweater than this would. I can justify it any day that you like, but um, it's not without its challenges. But yes, so this is a sort of newish yarn. This is gold leaf. Uh, it's the gold leaf colorway. It is batch number one, and it is just really, really beautiful. Let me hold it up to the camera for you to be able to see it a little bit better. So here you are. You can see it is lovely. It's got a beautiful ply to it. It's very, very squishy, and just it's really, really pretty. So um, yeah, definitely a yarn line to look out for in the future. And for all that it is sort of a, a non-superwash, it doesn't feel particularly prickly to me. It's similar to some of the blends that a fibre company has here in the UK. Um, it's probably most similar to their sort of Cumbria worsted base, although that has mohair in it, which is definitely more prickly than this. Um, but I, I'm really excited to work with this, so yeah delighted to have picked some of this up even if it is a little similar to it's fine don't worry about it it's fine right we're getting through it you'll be pleased to know we are getting through it so next up I headed over to the buildings and in the buildings was a yarn company that I have been just so desperate to go and see since I saw them last year I didn't purchase anything from them last year and kicked myself about it most of the way home but this year one of the sweaters that kept cropping up at the festival, pun intended, um, was the Stone Crop Pullover by Andrea Mowry. I'll put her picture of it up here on the screen. There were a huge number of these sweaters at the festival, including one worn by my lovely friend Vanessa, and her version in particular was definitely a source of inspiration. Now, Neighbourhood Fibre Company is a wonderful, wonderful yarn line based out of the US, and they had a sample of the sweater that there on their stand in um, it's their kind of lovely yellowish green colorway called Oliver and then a contrasting blue in a ply yarn and um, sure enough I went over there and promptly grabbed at that and then I kind of had a little bit of a change of heart now I know what you're thinking because it was olive green like what was there not to like clearly we've established that I have a thing for that but um I did decide to branch out a little bit. A lot of the versions that I'd seen were in sort of blues or navies and actually I really liked it. So instead I went back and picked up this combo. Now it's not exactly outside my wheelhouse, let's be clear. This is their fingering weight uh, base, so this is the Studio Sock base and the colour weight is Palisades. It is 400 yards on a superwash merino and I'll hold it up for you to see. There is beautiful variegation, it's a slightly purplish blue. It is, again, probably a little bit outside of my autumnal colour palette, but I still think I can make it work. I do love blues, I love wearing them, I love wearing them with jeans in particular, but this is really what I think is going to make it. This is there, um, or rather this is a company called Plied, oops, dropping it, 
um, and it's a partnership between them and Neighbourhood Fibre Company to create the Stone Crop Kit. Um, it is a yarn that's spun in New Hampshire, it's dyed in Baltimore and the colourway is everyone's place. The yarn base is North Avenue, it's 100% wool and it is 215 yards to a skein. Now if I hold it up and it focuses you should be able to see that it has this amazing plied texture. Now there's a few of this, that's, uh, there's a fair bit of this that's been in my, um, in my purchases as you can see but certainly this sort of slight variegation, the barber pulling, is what gives the stone crop pullover so much of its kind of uniqueness and individuality. So the depth that that will offer alongside the blue, I think is going to make it incredibly interesting. So this is going to be another one of my cast-ons for the Blame Dunder Knit Along, possibly after the Felix pullover, because I'm hoping that one should be fairly swift, but I'm very much looking forward to working this up. I will probably knit the pattern without the bubbles. Those of you familiar with the stone crop pullover pattern will know that it is fairly heavily bubbled and uh, much as I love a bubble they do eat a lot of yarn and they tend to get in the way of things so um, I thought about it but I think I will probably forgo some of the bubbles to have a little bit less yardage and a little bit more um, just kind of usability or, or practicality amongst that sweater so um, yeah really looking forward to casting this on too. In the giveaway prizes I showcased earlier, I mentioned that I had stopped by Loop Fibre Arts. I showcased one of their yin yang skeins for the giveaway. I also picked up one for myself, this time in a rather more predictable colour. Although I say that, I have very little orange in my stash. I have what I would consider gold, because we've established that. I have some fairly shocking coral, but I don't really have much in the way of what I would consider a true orange and so um this is a bit of a departure for me but i kind of love it so this again is their yin yang it is if i hold it up here for you to see it is dyed and plied together with this contrast color to give it more of a barber pulling effect i think a really simple kind of hat with a simple ribbed brim would look kind of amazing in this i don't want to go too overboard with the knitting because i think that will dominate it um but the colorway here is all that love it and again it is a worsted weight it is 220 yards of extra fine merino and just really really pretty so looking forward to having a play with this one too and lastly but by no means leastly sure um i was getting towards the end of the day we were tired by this point we were doing some of the rounds we were wandering back through some of the barns i didn't have a chance to make it to the day before and came across a company that again my friends were very familiar with claire in particular transient meow was very familiar with and um I went all in with it really. So this is a company called Utopia and this is their sustainable base. It is a 100% fine wool and it's a blend of merino, of rambouillet, of targi and coriadale and it's so it's, it's this amazing blend of both sheepy and soft. I cannot describe it, but this has no itch to it whatsoever in the way that, you know, some of the Coriadale blends or some of the, the sort of more rustic wools do. This does not at all. I would genuinely suggest if you have any kind of struggles or um, you struggle with kind of slightly prickly yarn, this I would challenge you to have a problem with. But um, it is, let me hold it up here so you can see, as I say, their sustainable base, it is absolutely beautiful. It's a dark grey heather in this instance. It is the charcoal colourway that I purchased. I purchased three skeins of it, as you can see, and it is roughly a DK weight. So this is 260 yards to a skein. Now, again, this is a little bit out of my wheelhouse. It is rare that I go for something that isn't, you know, gold. Um, but that being said, this felt so incredibly practical and special. I do think I may end up using this for Kristen of Vullenvine has just launched her Stoker shawl pattern, which I think is beautiful. And I think it's crying out for something as cosy and as woolly as this, because this is going to be so warm and snuggly around my neck. I just, it needs to be all up in my grill. So um, yeah, final purchase of the festival were these three beauties here. And so with that, and after a little bit of standing in line at the donut queue, we bade farewell to Rhinebeck 2019. It was 
an absolutely incredible weekend and I know that I sit here and I show you all these things that I purchased and you know it feels a bit kind of much and it feels a bit commercialized and what I would say to that, and I do appreciate that there are people who dislike it because, you know, there's a lot of people that go that kind of grab at yarn or it feels very kind of much a bye bye bye, you have to get everything that you can kind of festival. Um, I can absolutely appreciate that 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 is the way that some people feel about it, that it's some it's the way some people treat it, absolutely understandably. Um, for me though, and I think particularly the second time around, the single biggest thing and the single biggest takeaway from the festival is always going to be the people. The people that you get a chance to meet, to connect with, the vendors that you get to meet in real life and show your support for in real life, the opportunity that you have to put real life faces to online names and conversations and just the chance to hear people's voices for the first time. It's amazing and incredible and I lost track of the number of people that I hugged and if I hugged you and was inappropriate in any way I'm very sorry <laughs> but I was just giddy and delighted to meet so many of you there in person and for those of you who weren't able to go I hope that between this recap and our, our little giveaway you've had a chance to appreciate some of the fun of Rhinebeck for yourselves. And speaking of appreciating that fun, the glorious gold along did not stop at Rhinebeck alone. No, indeed, because I put out a bit of a call to say for those of you that wanted to wear your gold garments, to, to wear some gold or knit along with some gold in solidarity of those of us at Rhinebeck, you'd be welcome to do so by posting in the group or by using the Instagram hashtag and good Lord, you delivered. And so... It was one thing to meet a bunch of people at Rhinebeck and see them all decked out in gold. It was another to then go back to the house and see so many more of you who were posting about it and who were liking and commenting on those people who had been there and those who hadn't. And it was just, I, it's just the fucking best and you make me so happy. And so to each and every one of you who did that, I just thank you from the absolute bottom of my heart. It was incredible. And so with so much love and joy for what this was able to do. It is with the greatest of pleasure that I introduce to you the final, for this year at least, Gold Along Gallery.
it's just been magnificent. Um, there's quite a lot of my face that was in there, <laughs> I apologise for that. Um, clearly there were a few folk at Rhinebeck who uh, we were able to take pictures together which was amazing and wonderful and thank you so much for tagging me in those of them that you did. Um, but also to those of you who didn't join, who still posted and engaged with us, it was just so wonderful to see your pictures there, I appreciate it, no end. I know how much everyone enjoys the galleries. They do take a little bit longer to put together, but I love doing it and I love showcasing your projects because the inspiration that you bring and that I can then help to share with so many others here in this community is part of what I love about doing this so, so much. And I think it's part of what you enjoy as well, which is even better. And so the good news is that while the gold long is no more, the blame dungeon it along is approaching and therefore the galleries, they will continue, fear not. And so please do feel free to post your progress using the blame dungeon it along hashtag over on Instagram or to post in the blame dungeon it along chatter group. Or indeed, if you manage to bust out an FO, post that shit in the FO thread and fair play to you. Um, as I mentioned right up front, we'll be starting that this Friday on the 1st of November. It will run until the 31st of January. And the only condition is it has to be something that you cast on and that brings you joy in some form or another. I'm so looking forward to seeing what you do with it this year. But dear goodness, I have spoken at you quite enough. I have barely had any knitting to show for it. And yet this has taken a while. So with no further ado, it is about time that I bid farewell to you for this week. Thank you again so much to those of you who've borne with me as we've gone through all of this. Again, apologies for not having more footage to share. You can see some of the things I was up to over on the Instagram feed, which is linked below. Um, but if nothing else, I've had a chance to share some wonderful new acquisitions with you all. As ever, I wish you a wonderful rest of day, rest of week. I hope you're knitting is keeping you happy and fulfilled but if for whatever reason it isn't I hope you have the opportunity to knit vicariously. Keep on keeping on and I'll speak to you again very soon. Bye! So some friends stopped by this booth the day before and I couldn't resist but picking up a few of these and I've just managed to create a precursor to what I was going to talk about next so Oh, that was virtuously done. Um, yeah, so apparently <laughs> this is not my fifth skein. This is in fact the Magpie Fibers from earlier because, um, spoiler alert, I am predictable. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is a totally acceptable amount of gold for one person to have brought back. It's fine, I mean, it's, it's a lot of gold. And yes, my definition is still very broad, but you know, this is called gold leaf, so it's not just me. And this has definitely got gold in it, so it's not just me. And this is called gold, because it's called rose gold, so ha, doubters. Then, all right, fine, this is maybe orange, let's maybe, we can maybe put you down there. But you know, this is definitely gold, 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 and this, I might have a problem. Sometimes it's only when you get to the end of filming that you realise just quite how much yarn you brought back. Um, yeah, it's, um, there's, there's a fair old, I mean, I mean, yeah, um, oops. 